Hi, and welcome to the third edition of Distilled Demographics, Population Reference Bureau's videos to make demography fun. The first one we did was on pyramids, and the last one, the second one, was on population myths. But now we come to the really fun one, the birth rate. Hey, and what's more popular than the birth rate? Everybody loves babies. Everybody likes to talk about the birth rate going up and the birth rate going down. Uh, especially nine months after things like, you know, a power outage, a blizzard, as we had recently. We got quite a few phone calls about that. Uh, or any other natural disaster or, or happening. The birth rate, of course, to get serious, is a very, very important rate. It's a rate that we should all fully understand if we are to understand, you know, the way our world works. It's of importance to sociologists, to people planning uh, educational systems, and to policymakers, although for them usually a little bit too late. But so, let's take a look now at some of the measures, and we promise to make them fun. Just for fun, take a look at this, uh, this cover of Economist magazine some years ago. That this is kind of the European view of the birth rate. Uh, they see the U.S. as a country with a very high birth rate. So we have here a pr rather pregnant Statue of Liberty, and then standing behind her, well, I guess you might call that old Europe or something like that. So let's take a look at two countries, because for one thing, we know that birth rates aren't the same from place to place, and they're not the same from country to country. So let's look at two countries with about the same population size. First of all, there's Hungary, with about 10 million people. How many births every year in Hungary? Well, last year there were about 99,000. But that's not a rate yet, is it? Uh, all we know is there's 10 million people and 99,000 births. But if we divide 99,000 by 10 million and then multiply that by 1,000, are you still there with me? What do we get? 10. So we have 10 births in Hungary each year, approximately, for every 1,000 people. Now, that was fun, you've got to admit. Let's compare that to another country with a higher birth rate. Okay, how about Somalia? Now, Somalia has about 9 million people, and it has approximately 400,000 births per year. Now, doing the same magic as we did with Hungary, we come up with a birth rate of about 45 per thousand. Now, we often call this a crude birth rate, basically because it applies to the whole population, not just to women of childbearing age. But we certainly do notice one thing, 45 versus 10 is a pretty big difference. But what does that mean, really? I mean, women in Hungary aren't averaging 10 children, and women in Somalia aren't averaging 45. So we have to come up with something better. And wouldn't you know it, they did. And what do we call that? The total fertility rate. Now, the total fertility rate, or TFR, is one of the demographer's favorite numbers, because then you can say to someone, women in Hungary aren't averaging 10 children per woman, they're averaging about 1.3. Or women in Somalia are averaging over 6 children per woman. Now all of a sudden I get the picture. Hey, wait a minute, 1.3 and 6? That's a pretty different situation. Now we've seen that birth rates are easy to calculate, and they're fun. But are they important? Of course they are. Birth rates determine so many things in, say, national planning. The number of teachers we're going to need. Uh, the number of people eventually who will enter the elderly ages. And they're so very different today from one region of the world to the other. Take a look for uh, a minute at these two graphs. One shows the total fertility rate, our friend, the TFR, that tells us how many children women are having for the U.S. and for South Korea over the last 30, 40 years. Sure, we noticed the big hump of the baby boom uh, in the 1950s and the 1960s in the U.S., uh, but the really important part today comes at the end. What we notice is the U.S. did not drop below two children per woman, not very much. It came down to around two children per woman and stayed there. South Korea didn't. So what's the effect of that? Take a look, for example, at these two countries, the Republic of Congo, former Zaire, uh, and Germany. On the top bar, 
you can see that there's about 12, 12 million people in the Republic of Congo who are below the age of five. That's about five times the number in a similar five-year age group in their parents, the ones who bore them. But now let's look at Germany, and we see exactly the opposite. With a low birth rate, there's slightly less than half children in Germany ages zero to four uh, than in their parents' age groups. And this, I, this is one of the concerns uh, that uh, developed countries have today, and on the other hand, developing countries, whose birth rates they may want to modify in some way. So this is one of the most important effects of the birth rate. It affects aid structure. It affects the consumer markets that will be coming up down the road. It will affect the demand for housing. So while it's fun, it's also important. You remember earlier we mentioned how when the U.S. birth rate came down, it came down to around two children per woman, while well, South Korea's didn't. And we said that was pretty important. But why? Well, after all, it does seem pretty obvious that if, uh, if a couple has two children, that what have, they, what have they done? They've replaced themselves. So as they go through life and they pass away, they've left two children behind. And eventually a population will stop growing. So we call this replacement level fertility, around two children per woman. But it isn't two children per woman. And we will frequently see uh, some, some popular articles get, that get this a little bit confused. So let's take a little closer look. Replacement level fertility is actually 2.1 children per woman. And I don't know about you, I've never seen 0.1 of a child, but mathematically that's just something we have to do. Let's take a look at these two. Uh, two babies right here. So a couple has had these two babies, one of whom enjoys studying the birth rate, and it appears that the other one doesn't. Uh, but nonetheless, they have two children. And a little bit of a sticky wicket mathematically is there are 5% on average more boy babies born worldwide than female. So we have to add a 0.05 to the two children. Then there is the problem that not all women survive through their childbearing ages. Uh, most do in the industrialized countries that this particular number represents here, the 2.1. So we add a little bit. And what do we get? 2.06. But who wants to go around saying 2.06? So what we say, oh, what the heck, 2.1. Got it? But 2.1 is only in countries where we have high life expectancy at birth, in other words, low death rates. If we look at uh, South Africa and do exactly the same thing, we have the same two children, one happy, one unhappy. We have 0.05 for the sex ratio at birth, but because of much higher mortality in South Africa, notice we have to add 0.43. So in fact, replacement level fertility in South Africa is more like 2.48 or 2.5. Now that was fun. Everybody enjoys the birth rate, everybody enjoys babies. And after all, the birth rate is how we come into the world. In our next and fourth episode of Distilled Demographics, we're going to look at some of the rates about the way we leave it, the death rate.